Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Bottom Line. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. Our show is brought to you by the U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team, which provides awareness of Army opportunities while serving. Team members are active duty soldiers that compete in CrossFit, Strong Man, Strong Woman competitions, both nationally and internationally. Make sure to check out the link in our description for more details. On today's episode, I'm here with Justin LaFranco to discuss the recent news of CrossFit President Jason Dunlap resigning and moving to Orange Theory Fitness. This news, it was made public through his LinkedIn profile. Justin, did we have any inkling that this was going to happen or did it really just come about because of searching the internet? Um, yeah, we had a we had a good indication that this was going to be coming um, down. Uh, the, some kind of announcement was going to be coming. We started tracking this uh, sometime in the June slash July timeframe. I don't remember exactly. We started hearing rumors that there was going to be a departure. And look, I mean, the guy of of, of Dunlop's pedigree and the re- resume that he has with Nike, Starbucks, the Canada Goose, now Orange Theory, president of CrossFit. This isn't just a move that happens over the course of one or two weeks. That something of this magnitude and being, I think, he's moving on to be. I think it's some uh, international head of, uh, of Orange Theory. Like that's not a small job and, and that kind of transition doesn't happen quickly. But we've been hearing for a while that he was going to be um, making a departure. We put some feelers out there. CrossFit said, no, 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 he's sticking around. Um, and then we heard that it was going to be coming after the CrossFit Games. So it wasn't big surprise that uh, today we saw um, or tipped off that uh, LinkedIn. Uh, he had posted something to LinkedIn announcing his, his change in, in, in employment and um, – you know, now we're here talking about it. Do you think that there was strategy behind waiting until after the games to make this public? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't. I think when the concept of distractions from the games, game season, environment, et cetera, it made a lot of sense to wait after the games. He also hit his one year mark, one year, one month mark, I believe. Um, previously, in changes of leadership, we've seen similar cases happen in the past. So with Jeff Kane, who was CEO a couple of years ago when Glassman was owning the company, he left right after the CrossFit Games. Um, the announcement for Don Fall taking over um, happened just before the CrossFit Games, and then you know a few weeks after the games, you sort of have the the president um and so that makes a lot of sense i think timing perspective wise and nothing's particularly strange about that so you name some of the other players that have kind of changed in these leadership roles i think that this is the fourth major leadership role within crossfit to transition out of their position in just a couple of months Uh, what do you think that this says about the stability or even the future of the company moving forward yeah, I think, and it's actually more than four. And, and it, like, I think it bears just reminding people what's happened over the last uh, seven months. So I'm just going to go chronologically here and just give mm-hmm. people a little bit of a picture and understanding of what all's gone down since January. But January 4th, Dave Castro was fired from his position as head of uh, sport for CrossFit. February 3rd, Eric Rosa, the owner of the company and then CEO, stepped down after being in the position for 18 months. On May 16th, the CTO resigned after approximately a year in the position. May 25th, the then acting, or sorry, then CFO, uh, Andrea, uh, Allison Andriazzi, excuse me, um, was was promoted or, or given the title of interim head. July, June 8th, Dave Castro returns to CrossFit to be an advisor to the CEO. Um, sometime in the June, July timeframe, we were hearing that Dunlop would be leaving uh, the end of July, Lori Hansen, the executive assistant of the C-suite, left after one year in the position. Then on August 2nd, Don Fall was named the CEO. And then on August 26th, which is today, pres- uh, the president of the company, Jason Delmop, resigned after one year in the position. I think it's notable that we've seen a lot of individuals that are only there for one year, one and a half years at the maximum. And that was Rosa, who obviously mm-hmm. went, led the purchase and acquisition of the company and then stood in the, um, the CEO position. And I think if you're looking at that eight major staffing changes in seven months, there's a serious question begins to start forming, which is, which is continuity. And why are these people leaving? Um, I'm not saying they're all leaving for negative reasons, but when one individual leaves, it's one thing. But when you start having multiple individuals that are coming into CrossFit from other areas of other industries, you have individuals with different backgrounds that didn't come from inside of CrossFit that come into CrossFit, and then they only stick around for one year. It begins to develop and establish a pattern of behavior where people aren't really sticking around for a long time. I don't think that signals anything necessarily dire for the company or the industry, but it does begin to 
seem a little troubling that individuals are not sticking around and tying their careers. These are high level positions. These are not low level individuals that are helping out on various teams of publishing or in advertising, et cetera. These are people responsible for core elements of the company in very serious and important roles. And they're not sticking around for the long term. I think that is a little bit concerning. And then just continuity. Um, CrossFit and the industry and the fans, everybody that works here involved in this whole community has, over the last several years, has had a lack of continuity. Season structure changes constantly. Um, leadership changes constantly. And you're in a position of turmoil or just some kind of uh, soul searching element. And it does begin to kind of wear it down. And I don't think we are seeing more continuity. We're just seeing turnover and changes and adjustments and um, that kind of stuff, I look. As, I think it, I think it's wearing people down. But at least we now have a CEO. <laughs> step in the right direction. There might be a step back in, in this instance. But if we're looking at CrossFit as a whole, obviously the pandemic, um, Greg Glassman leaving, all of that was a big disruption to the sport and the industry as a whole. Do you think that this is just a trickle down effect of growing pains during some sort of like a rebuilding phase? It's hard to say really. Um, we were, uh, a few of us were on a call with Allison Andriotzi, the uh, interim head, um, and probably is now returning to her position as CFO uh, full time, um, asking kind of what the vision is for CrossFit and not what you're doing over the next 12 months, but what are you doing over the next 10 years? Um, they kind of stuck to this line of that Rosa had originally stated um, early on in his tenure, which is to, af to affect uh, 100 million lives, um, you know, uh, I, I know I'm butchering, I'm butchering the quote, uh, but something to that effect. And it's like, that sounds really laudable, but how do we get there? And where are we going for a sports perspective? And how do we increase the global viewership of this sport and the interest and the financial opportunities of the sport? How are we going to grow more people doing CrossFit on a regular basis? Is it through a brick and mortar affiliate model? Is it through more digital services? What is it? And it's kind of one of those things where we haven't had or received any kind of very clear guidance or answer as to where they're going. And it doesn't always have to be bigger or 10 X or, or whatever. It doesn't mean that they're failing at their job, but I think people are, are looking for some answers to those questions that they want to see. And they want to hear that directly from leadership. And that seems to have been something that's um, been a little bit challenging um, to be honest. And it's, you know, a lot of people come back and say, well, who's, who's really leading CrossFit and where are they going? And for a while, that's been a difficult question to answer. And I I'm hoping, and I'm hopeful that Don uh, Fall, the new CEO is going to be able to take us in a good direction and, and provide a sense of leadership, a sense of continuity, a sense of direction to the whole industry, because it's not just the people that sign up for the open or that compete in the games. And it's not just the 13, 14,000 affiliates globally. There's also literally hundreds of companies whose economic well-being is tied up in the health of this industry. I'm not just talking about the rogues, which are outside of CrossFit. I'm talking about fit aids and O2s and assault fitness and any of the grips or the shoes or the, the apparel companies that are wrapped up into here that are selling to consumers. This industry is in fact much larger than just the affiliation and, and the 15, the 14,000 or so affiliates globally. Um, this is a multi-billion dollar industry that I think wants to see, um, the company responsible for this ecosystem stand up and articulate a direction. And I think that lack of continuity and staff and leadership, et cetera, has made that a little bit more challenging. Um, and, and this is a perfect opportunity for Don Fall to step up and lead and do that. What do you think that says about him moving from CrossFit to Orange Theory. I don't know how it's like where you live in Austin, but I mean, in the past year to year and a half, I've watched four affiliates close. The affiliate that I go to is one of the only ones standing within a 45 minute radius. Do you think that this is foreshadowing any fears that we should have as people who love CrossFit and love affiliates? No, I don't necessarily, you know, I mean, look, look, Orange, I don't, I don't think that you're going to see, or this is signaling a mass exodus from affiliation or even taking affiliation aside, because a lot of people are unaffiliated that still do CrossFit. So I don't mm -hmm. think that you're going to see a mass exodus from that and that people are whole wholesale uh, deciding to make a fitness change from, you know, from CrossFit style training and going to um, 
uh, Orange Theory. Now, I'll also say reciprocally that Gary Gaines, who's the current international um, head of affiliates, um, GM affiliates, whatever the exact title is, came from Soul Cycle. So we had an instance where somebody went and made the opposite direction, came over from there. Uh, he's been in the position, I think, uh, two years approximately. He came over very early on with the Rosa transition, and he's been in that position for a long time. And he came from Soul Cycle, and that was his most recent employer before he came to work at CrossFit. So I think that from what we're seeing and what we're hearing from CrossFit, the affiliation numbers can remain steady, and I believe that they are growing. That's what we're hearing from them, and so I don't, I'm not overly concerned with doing that um, necessarily. And I also don't think that. Staff changes at the top of CrossFit HQ are really something that affects the day-to-day decision-making of each affiliate and each gym owner. I think they're attempting to run a gym the best way that they can, turn it into a profitable business that's scalable. And I think that's where their heads are at, less so on who the leadership is. But when you're thinking about the next 10 years as an affiliate owner, yeah, I think it matters. But from the Mm -hmm. day-to-day operation, I don't see anybody running for the hills just because the C-suite is looking a little like scrambled eggs. So then Justin, what's your bottom line? Um, I, I, like I've said this a couple of times, I'll say it again. Continuity, I think is really key in this industry. This industry has been asked to take, take on a lot of changes and see a lot of shifts. And I think for, for crying out loud, I think, I think people just want somebody to stand up there and say, this is where we're going. This is how we're going to accomplish it together. And these are my plans for the future. I, I, I think that this, those are easy questions to ask, hard questions to answer. And I'd love to see CrossFit present a clear vision for doing that. And I think this is an opportunity if, 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 if Don is uh, I- the new CEO, Don Fall, if he's, if he's up to the challenge and task, which I believe he is, um, is a perfect opportunity for him to do that, to be able to, um, to be the CEO and the leader that CrossFit needs. Um, and uh, so my bottom line is, this is a perfect opportunity for CrossFit to stand up and lead and show where they're going for the industry and, and lead from the front. And that's, I think, what a lot of people would, would, would like to see. And I think they'd appreciate, you know, just a little bit of a breath of fresh air. It's just hearing from CrossFit directly and from the CEO. Mm, we certainly all would. Justin, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Thanks for having me.